By day, I am a pharmaceutical rep, so I cover all the hospitals in the northeast, basically. My passion in life is the lifeboat. I'm on the crew 22 and a half years now. Once the pager goes off, time is of the essence because we don't know what we're going out for until we get down to the station. If somebody is in the water, time really is critical. You literally have to drop everything and go. Hello? Mom, the lifeboat's going out. Talk to you later. Bye. Okay, bye, bye. Mum is, lives very close to the house, thank God. So when I'm going to work and stuff, she comes over and minds my little boy. Our head, it's a small fishing village, so it's mainly the fishing fraternity that we have to go out for. As a child living in the village, every time the boat would go to put to sea, there would be two maroons set off. They're like two really loud bangs in the village, and the whole village would hear them. Your parents would put you in the car, everybody would drive down to the beach, watch the boat going out, and it was a part of growing up. That interest grew and passion grew the older I got. And I knew that there was no women on the lifeboat, but I didn't see that as a big obstacle, really, to be honest with you. I, could, I knew I could do as good a job as the boys. I'm currently one of the navigators on the lifeboat, so my role is to talk to the Coast Guard, work out where that casualty is, and really it's my responsibility to try and find that casualty. We have reports of a fishing vessel east of Clara Head, and it's in need of assistance. Over. Dublin Coast Guard Radio, this is Carhead Lifeboat, understood, stand by for ETA, over. For me, to be able to be part of it and to give something back to the community, and like my whole philosophy is to be able to bring somebody home, to bring people's loved ones home to them. And, you know, th that's the reason I do it. Look. Bye-bye. We go. We go. Say bye-bye now. Bye-bye. The lifeboat was the one thing that's got me through so many difficult times in life. I lost my husband in December 2015 to cancer. Steve was the first guy I ever went out with that ever fully supported me in what I did. And he was unbelievably proud of me. And I'm so grateful for that, always will be. If I was completely honest with myself, it's great having Ethan, he's, he's been so important to me. But at the same time, life is very lonely. It is very lonely without him. When I lost Steve, I would get a random phone call, random text in the evening time off different members of the crew. How are you doing? Is everything okay? Do you need anything? Do you know where we are? I found it was my safe haven. It's always been my safe haven and they've always got your back. We're a great team. Dublin Coast Guard Radio, this is Clarahead Lifeboat, Clarahead Lifeboat. We are back on the beach in Clarahead and we will call you from the landline when we're refueled and ready for service again. You'll be back fishing tonight anyway, so... No one hot No. Grand. Didn't That's lose good. that much time. Hey, oh, how are you, Hi, hey, 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 buddy. Hello. 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 Ethan was conceived three months after Steve died by IVF, with Steve's sperm, obviously. So he's a very special little boy. Have a chat with the guys! Like I have still part of my husband living on in my son. I still feel like I have Steve here with me. And he's very like his daddy, thank God. And he would have been an amazing dad. But um, any kind of worries you'd have of bringing him up just on my own. I know I have another whole other family down in the lifeboat station. They absolutely love him and they're very protective of him. You know, it's like having 30 dads. Ethan's definitely going to be a lifeboat saver.